Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new day of Road to TC2 World 2017. Now, um, I am pre-recording this, Fort Wayne Regionals just happened and I played in it. Um, I don't know how I did, I hope I did well, um, bringing back some points to Latin America. But um, since I am pre-recording this, I will feature um, one of the most, or not one of the most, like I really talked about deck during this past week. Um, Whaler did manage to get second place at the um, at the Dutch Open on the weekend of the seventh and eighth of January, and it had a lot of people talking about it. And the player who got second was kind enough to share his list over at six prizes. So that's what I'm gonna feature today. Um, Wednesday's videos will most likely be. Um, some sort of report or something featuring the deck I used at um, at Athens. But for now, we are going to play Waylord. Now, this list is very interesting. And after reading my uh, the players' thoughts on like the tech cards and tech choices and everything, I feel like he had a really good um, plan going into a tournament. Really, really good plan. And I'm not actually surprised he did so well. And Having read that, I generally think like this could be a viable deck choice for future tournaments. Um, but yeah, let's get right into the deck list analysis, shall we? Um, we have four Whaler DX. Now, Whaler DX is a pretty big deal right about now. Um, 250 HP, and then you get a four retreat cost, but you have four float stones to compensate that. And so it's really difficult to take down a Wailer DX in one hit. You're not going to be attaching energies to Wailer DX. And um, you also have four rough seas. So between all the Wailers, you can switch around and heal between 60, 90, 120 damage per turn, uh, depending on how you manage your resources. So that's something that's pretty, pretty good. And then all, you have all these other tech Pokemon. You have one Wofet in order to help. Um, get by the Vileplume matchup so you can actually activate your item cards and then you also have the Carbink which um, pretty much forces decks like um, not Eveltal but decks like um, sorry decks like Mega Mewtwo and Mega Gardevoir and potentially even Mega Scissor to power up um, or to get Garbodor out and that gives you an easy target for Minchino to Lysander and remove the tool card um, from your opponent's Pokemon. Then you also have one Shaman and it's not really to draw but it's simply to to cycle through, through the damage. Um, the damage can start piling up and if your opponent isn't dealing too much significant damage to your Wailers and you're able to heal off rough seas it seems really really viable a really viable way to win um you also have one hood hood which actually is like a quaking punch but without dealing damage so something like uh, uh, a minchino follow-up by hood hood uh, a hood hood lock can potentially seal off games um depending on the game state and then you also have lugia which can be um a monster i would say and can really um, surprise your opponent after the damage has piled up through Shaman. You can actually take prizes with this, with this deck. So that's um, overall the main strategy with the Pokemon that are featured in this deck list. And then let's talk about the supporters and the item cards because we have a lot to talk about there. Um, no Sycamore, which is obviously really surprising. And we do have four N, and. Um, or Team Flare Grunt. Um, they're both obviously to disrupt your opponents, um, disrupt their resources and everything, especially a Team Flare Grunt. Um, you also have three Lysander to mess with whatever they do decide to bench, and you have Captivating Pokepuff to really take advantage of that. Um, you have three Pokemon Fan Club to try and search for the right um, Pokemon you need to for the right situation, if you will. And then you also have one Tech Shona one tech Olympia in case you are running out of um, float stones or something like that or for that extra 30 HP of healing which can come in handy um, one team rocket's handy work for that late game where you can uh, potentially end up decking out your opponent by flipping one or two heads 
and then one delinquent which is actually really nice to combo with rough seas because you get to potentially heal 60 or heal twice with rough sea so a potential 240 healing per turn and then you also have ace trainer um, in order to punish your opponents for your, any quick KOs he, um, he or she does get and then that's the supporters and they all serve a very specific function then you have the item cards we have four verse seekers to reuse all of the supporters i just mentioned and four puzzle of time to reuse not only those supporters but also potentially get back pokemon potentially get back things like max potions or rough seas um you also have four max potions so if the rough seas healing isn't enough or if you can't find rough seas for whatever reason you even have the max potion and then we have the four float stone which i talked about a little bit earlier which you really really want since there's no um reliable way to remove tools at the moment other than attacks or maybe Rattata's ability, both stones are really good so you can cycle around the Wailers. Um, then you also have the two enhanced hammer um, in order to remove um, special energy. You have two crushing hammer which I'm not entirely happy about. I feel like you should be playing three or four or none, not just two, but hey, this is the list that got to the final so I'll be using it right here. And then you have two trainers mail which um, once again three would be ideal two is the bare minimum i would say but it can help you in getting pretty much the the whole of your deck it's gonna be really random and it's gonna be really difficult to ensure that you get the actual card you need but it might be useful in order to hit that second puzzle of time in order to hit that team flare grunt to slow down your opponent and finally we have the single fighting fury belt which could potentially help for a late game scenario or maybe to power up Lugia or give um, Hoot Hoot or uh, Michino or even Carbink a little bit more longevity. So um, that's a deck list. Oh, and you have three double colorless energy, of course. So I'm pretty sure this deck will generate a ton of misplays from, from your opponents. I'm pretty sure I'm going to misplay as well because I have not practiced with that deck. But um, let's give it a whirl. Um, games will probably be very long so i'm not entirely sure how um how how many games we will be able to fit in to a single video but um let's let's try this out i'm excited to use this deck honestly i'm actually excited to use this deck and like based on the preview screen my opponent literally gets no information whatsoever on the deck's main purpose so that's also pretty pretty good i would say and yeah let's see what we can do let's see what we can do here so my opponent is going first which doesn't really make a difference we do get to start two waylords a max potion an olympia and a rough seas and a dc so pretty okay start i would say um the only thing making this better would be maybe a pokemon fan club and a floatstone so that we could start cycling shamans um and we are up against greninja a pure greninja we, because i didn't see colorless in my opponent's um, previous screen so it's definitely going to be um no the no town flame version and no jirachi either so i wonder if my opponent has any other water type techs to abuse here it'll be interesting to see yeah the more i think about this deck the more it makes sense actually like in a best of three formats for regionals or what i assume was like the dutch open it makes a lot of sense i would say a lot a lot of sense um my opponent was deciding between spending resources or not i'd imagine so he just attaches an energy and passes and i feel like i'm gonna do the same thing um, I just need to wait until I get things like float stones or things like that. Um, my opponent might misplay and just, um, like if I found, um, if I'm able to find the Lugia, like I can just win outright because my opponent might think that I'm just going to try to, to deck him out or maybe his hand is just that dead. Yeah, so he does go for for the dive ball. So he is going to try to set up. He's definitely going to try to set up here. And 
we can start, I guess, harassing him a little bit with a Team Flurry Grunt. Though I don't know how useful that will actually be. Um, decides to attach a second Water Energy and decides not to... Um, not to water duplicates. Okay. Um, I don't have old trouble, so I cannot search for the Lugia, right? But what I can do is like be annoying and remove my opponent's energy, and maybe force him to to go search for other things. Um, the trainer's mail does give me a float stone, which is pretty good. Um, I could have grabbed the end as well. Could have definitely grabbed the end, but I feel like my opponent's damage output is gonna be a bit limited right now. So I'm not in any real hurry. I have the Olympia, I have the Rough Seas, and I have the Max Potions. So he does go for the Moonlight Slash. Now, he generally, generally, okay, that's absolutely great. Um, I'm gonna retreat into the Waylord, and I will play the Rough Seas, and we're gonna play the Waiting Game. That's all we are going to do for now. Um, we just have to make sure that the math works out for us, and that I never allow him to... I never allow my Waylord to be at 140 HP away from getting KO'd. And yeah, we just have to be patient here. We really just have to be patient. Um, I'm surprised my opponent didn't set up because you would really like to win off of prices against Wailerd and setting up, like, you would definitely water duplicates for at least one Frogadier. So you have the double giant water shuriken going. You would definitely do at least that. Um, does target the active which makes sense, and he's gonna deal 140 damage. Um, no counter stadium, which is good, of course. And we just have to be careful here. 140 damage does... Um, does KO Wailer. so if he has two more water energy and a Lysander, he could potentially... KO Wailerd. So I'm gonna use the Olympia in order to heal maximum amount of damage and I just have to pass here. Um, we are playing a very very dangerous waiting game though. We are playing a very very dangerous waiting game and I would love to to find more Wailerds. That's what I really need here. I would love to find more Wailerds. Okay, my opponent has the giant water shuriken. Yeah, more Wailers is what I need here. Um, if I could cycle between four Wailers, I generally would not be worried at all. He decides to target the best Wailer. Okay. And he has a Fisherman immediately. He has a Fisherman immediately. So, after Ruffs is healing once again... Okay, I finally top deck a fan club. Which is awesome. Um, I will definitely here go for Shaman and another Wailerd. That way I can draw a couple extra cards and I get the Wailerd going. And I can promote this other Wailerd. Now, do I want to use the Max Potion right here? I don't think I do. I'm just gonna draw two cards here. And I have the Olympia. I can reuse the Olympia on this Wailer, so that's pretty good. Um, I get two supporters off of that, which is not ideal. Um, I'm just gonna promote Shimin. Actually, it might be better to just promote this Wailer. Yeah, I think that's better. And just use up the max potion. That way I can even draw an extra card off of the Shaman. Which is nice. Um, two Lysander is not useful at all. And then the Pokemon Fan Club is not useful either. Now it would seem that I'm at a risk of decking myself out. 
So thanks to Team Rocket's um, handiwork, I should be okay. Like eventually I should get the Team Rocket's handiwork. Eventually. But the damage is piling up though. The damage is definitely piling up. Um, I'm gonna play a Pokemon fan club. And I mean, I could grab these guys, but I don't think I need to. Though making my deck thinner would be nice. So that I can potentially top deck something useful. Um, preventing item cards might be okay. Yeah, I'm not going to grab anything. And then I'm just gonna play the Shaman. I'm gonna attach the DCE. And I'm gonna retreat into Shaman and I'm gonna do the Sky Return. And I'll promote the non. The non float stoned Waynerd. Hmm. Yeah, I know this is not the most exciting of games, but it's how I have to play, guys, in order to. To try and win this match. Okay, so he, he keeps going after the bench to Wailer EX. Does he have the Lysander though? Doesn't seem like he does. Okay. Okay, okay, great. Um, I heal 90 damage immediately, which is awesome. And then I just pass here. Um, I am risking this Waylord quite a bit. But I feel like unless he top decks the Lysander, he would have used it the previous turn. So unless he top decks the Lysander, I should be good here to use my max potion. And he keeps... Like eventually, unless he top decks a very... A very healthy amount of Verseekers, it's gonna come down to him dealing only 80 damage per turn. Okay, so he decides to go after the active, which I'm okay with. Um, there's a first versus seeker. There's three water energy. And there's a moonlight slash, which I am perfectly okay with. Um, I'm just gonna heal here. With rough seas, nothing is in range. Of uh, huh? Maybe I should just max potion here. Yeah, I think max potioning the active is the best, the best idea at this point in time. Um. Hmm. Yep, yeah, and I just pass here, and I simply pass. So you can see I do have more cards left in my, uh, less cards rather left in my deck than my opponent. And yeah, we're probably only going to have time for a single match here. Ugh. Okay. So, actually I'm going to need another max potion here. I am actually, ah, oh, that's perfect. That is a beautiful, a very very beautiful top deck um, I can retreat here onto Waylord and I can use Olympia to heal a further 30 and then I can promote Waylord I could promote Shaman and deal 30 damage it literally doesn't make a difference at all and like I'm just waiting for more max potions, for more things, and eventually my Team Rocket's handiwork. Unless it's prized. That would suck. Um, delinquent can also be useful here to reduce the amount of resources my opponent holds up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 cards in his hand. I have 7. So eventually, if I do need to do that, I can. He does go for the giant water shuriken. Huh. 
I think I really need the Team Rocket's handiwork. Okay, so he decides to end. Surprisingly, very surprisingly. He's up to 36 cards, I'm up to 33. I do get the double puzzle, which is great. And he attacks the active. Okay, so I might be forced to use a double puzzle right here to get back a max potion. And a uh, versus seeker, I would say. Or I could delinquent. Yeah, and get back the rough seas. I think that's my best play actually. I'm gonna delinquent, force my opponent to discard three cards, which is great. And then off of the delinquent, I can. I mean, off of the uh, puzzle of time, I can get back the max potion and the rough seas so i can heal once again off of the rough seas um, my opponent probably has a single energy but might not have um, enough to to giant water shuriken and attack so that might put the damage count in our favor might very big might um <clears throat> Yeah, there's one energy. And eventually we will draw our Seekers, we will draw more Rough Sea, so we can discard more resources of my opponent. And then eventually when we end, um, he will have less cards than we do in our deck. And that will be great. He's trying to decide what attack to use, I'm guessing. Oh no, he was using giant water shuriken, okay. Does he have the Lysander though? Yeah, allowing him to get a prize card would just be very detrimental here for us. So, I'm gonna end up using the max potion now because the Wailer is in a lot of danger here. And then I just retreat into the brand new Wailer and I guess I end here. Yeah, I do end. Um, there's more rough seas, and I have a Verseeker for a delinquent, so that's good news. All I have to do is pass here. And we'll see what my opponent wants to do. Huh. Okay, so he finds another verse seeker for Fisherman. So I'm gonna wait a little bit for him to use up um, a few energy and then I will use the delinquent because I don't want him discarding energy off of the delinquent. Wow, but he actually decides not to. Um, not to use giant water shuriken, surprisingly. He actually decides not to use that. Okay. So we're gonna be playing the waiting game apparently. Um, 31 to 28. I guess the bad thing about this is the fact that I also waste cards when I use the delinquent. I guess that's kind of bad as well. Am I going to lose though? Um, I might end up having to use Lugia. If I deal, yeah, I might end up having to use Lugia with the Fighting Fury belt. Um, but let's try to pressure my opponent here. I'm gonna use the Delinquent, I've already healed. I think. <laughs> I think I've already healed. He's gonna have to discard three cards. Or maybe my opponent is just playing super optimally and I'm misplaying my resources. I'm not entirely sure. He's gonna take a while though to decide what to discard. Okay, two frogies and a bursting balloon. 
I'm going to... Hmm. I'm not going to play the rough seas for now. I'm gonna let him maybe think he's a bit safe in dealing more damage. Yeah, there's a giant water shuriken. And then I'm gonna use the rough seas. And the more damage he's... The, the more he spreads out the damage, the better for us. Because I now get maximum usage off of the rough seas, which is great. Definitely pretty great. Yeah. And then I just retreat into this Waylord. And do I end here? Do I end? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So after I end to 6, there's still gonna be a 4 card difference. So what am I missing? How do I not lose here? With the Team Rocket's handiwork, that's the only way I can win. So I should start finding it as soon as possible, I guess. And I'm not going to find it. Okay. So I just pass here. Maybe it's prized. And I should have checked that with the Pogon fan club. Um, I'm not entirely sure. But now I'm getting worried. I'm actually, actually getting worried. Um, huh. So he decides not to use an ability. And I mean I could delinquent once again. And I do have Shona. But he still has a ton of N. So maybe I just wait. <laughs> I'm generally at a loss as to how to compensate for the deficit we're currently at. I am generally at a loss as to how to compensate. So just, this is what I'm gonna do for now, whilst I come up with a plan. I'm just gonna heal and retreat and so on and so forth. And, I mean, <laughs> maybe timer is gonna be a thing? He is lower on time than I am. And looks like he's um, increasing his, his pace of play. Oh, maybe I should do that myself as well. We have a solid 30 second advantage. <laughs> we have a solid 30 second advantage. Wow, I'm really sorry about you guys um, <laughs> working through this video. Um, I just, I want to save my versus seekers for the Team Rocket's handiwork, I think. I really think that's my best play. If it is in the deck, if it's not, then I might be in a little bit of trouble. If I had a DCE, then maybe I could consider um, putting the pressure with the Lugia. If I had a D if I had a DCE, which I do not. Yeah, the, the bad part about this match is the fact that I cannot, um, like, mess around with his energy. I cannot mess around with the energy in his deck. Okay, I feel like I have to play the fan club to find out if the... To find out if the... Um, if the Team Rocket's handiwork is in the prize cards or not. So I'm gonna do that. And there's Lugia and there's Shaman. And nope, it's right there. So I guess I'll find those two. Um, because whenever I get two DCs, I can kind of threaten with that. 
as well. So we have a few plans here. We have a few plans we can execute. Um, but it's gonna be a while. <laughs> it's actually gonna be a while. And now we lost our timer advantage. Now we actually lost our timer advantage. We have a six card disadvantage. And there's the team rocket handiwork. Okay. I am liking that. Let's play that. And let's start. Ugh. Are you serious? Are you serious? Wow. Two tails. Two tails right there. Two tails, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, let's go for it once again. Um, I mean, to compensate, we should get two heads here, right? That's how it works. One, nope, just the one. Just the one heads. And now we will probably end up using our last first seeker for Team Rocket's handiwork once again. We might still have another puzzle of time, but he has a super still. Puts back Froggy, Frogadier, and Octillery. So he has a really big advantage on us at this point in time. If I don't flip two heads, um, it might be game actually. It might actually be game. One. Nope. Just the one. Just the one. So now we really need the puzzle of time. Otherwise, I think we've lost here. Well, no. We still have the Shaman into Lugia. Or the Lugia, rather. The Lugia into Lugia. <laughs> but we need two TTs to accomplish that and the Fighting Fury Belt. We need that to happen. And then we still have ends to go through. <laughs> this is gonna be really annoying for everyone I know. <laughs> but I'm trying my best here, guys. I'm generally trying my best. Should have checked the second puzzle of time, though. I definitely should have checked that. Definitely should have checked that. Um... I really need the DTEs though. Either the DTEs or the puzzle of time. The DTEs or the puzzle of time. DTEs or puzzle of time. How many ends? Two Seeker and two N for my opponent. Yeah, we are going to deck ourselves out. And well, I do have the Shona, but he still has um, supporters. Yeah, maybe I should have saved my Burst Seekers for Shona. I generally don't know how to play this deck, apparently. I do not know how to play this deck. 10 cards left, still no sign of DCs, still no sign of the second puzzle. Now I'm getting worried. Wow, he's not even gonna deal damage anymore. Okay, there's one DC. Now we need either the Fighting Fury Belt or... Um, Or the second puzzle of time. Seven cards left to twelve. Seven cards left to his twelve. Six, six to eleven. There's a Fighting Fury Belt. Okay, so now I just need a second DCE. 
<laughs> Smiley face. My opponent doesn't know what's what's in store for him. He generally doesn't know. Okay. Captivating Pokepuff could actually be really good here, but I'm gonna save it until the end. I'm actually gonna say, or maybe I should play it right now. No, because the more cards he has in his hand, the odds are greater that he benches the Remorades and the Frokies he should have in his hand. Another Team for Grunt. Okay, three cards left in the deck. Still no sign of a second TCE though. I wonder... I wonder if I have two TCE prized. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Okay, no I don't. So, let's bench the Lugia. Let's attach a Fighting Fury Belt. Let's attach a TCE right here. Let's retreat into the Lugia. And, I mean, we could end but I really need the other TCE. So this is going to force him into benching more Pokemon, at least one more. And even though he will heal 30 damage, I can attach the other TCE and that's a KO on the Greninja break. That's actually a KO on the Greninja break. So he has to be really worried right here. He has to be really, really worried. He should be, at least. And he might start up using he might start using up resources. He probably won't end me in order to in order to avoid losing by deck out, I guess. Maybe I should have played the captivating Pokebuff. Okay, he does go for the giant water shuriken onto the Lugia. Which is our resource wasted, I'm glad to see that. I really hope my last card is a puzzle of time. <laughs> I really hope my last card is a puzzle of time. If it's not, I'm not sure if we will still be able to win. Okay, he does decide to bench the Remoraid. And a Froakie. Okay, so now Lugia on its own might actually be able to win us the game. Because I'm gonna attach the other DCE, I'm gonna KO the Greninja break. And I'm going to end my opponent. Um, down to six cards and Lugia might actually end up taking enough prize cards to win us the match. It's gonna be a while before he attacks again. So let's attach the DCE. The second puzzle of time is not there, but now we actually have a chance to draw it off of um, off of the off of our prize cards. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes, okay. So we're gonna start turning up the heat here. It's no longer gonna be a deck out game. Um, I want to pressure my opponent. I replenish my deck. He will replenish his deck as well. Which is annoying since he does have so many more cards than I do. But now the plan is to win by prizes potentially. Um, we're gonna deep hurricane here. Get the KO on the break. Draw our prize card, which is a puzzle of time, which is absolutely great. It's absolutely great to see that. And if for some reason my opponent decides not to go for the water duplicates or decides to promote Remorade and only evolve into one Frogadier, we have the Lysander to KO the Froki. So, okay, he does go for the Froki here. So he might end up actually going for the water duplicates. He uses up a die ball, so yeah, this is what I wanted to see. He's gonna start using up resources, which is good for us, obviously. Really good for us. Um, we didn't draw too well off of the N. <laughs> and this is actually a 40 minute game. This is now a 40 minute game, and I, <laughs> I made plans to be somewhere in 10 minutes, so I'm obviously, obviously going to be late. I am obviously going to be late. Because I'm not going to leave this game unfinished. For sure, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, look, he's down to 24 cards. He will use water duplicates. So we are putting pressure. He only goes for one throw right here. Um, I mean, that's not 
great to see. But now the ends will also favor us. Now the ends will also favor us, which is good to see. And we could even, like, if we find a stadium, which we don't have in our hand, if we had a way to get a stadium, we would actually have the KO and the Greninja. Well, he's gonna have the energy though, so never mind. The Greninja and the energy, and that's a KO. Never mind. Never mind. So we are back to. Oh, he does N. I am okay with that, actually. Because look at the count now. <laughs> look at the count now. And we get the rough seas. So I feel like we just turn things around. Um, that's his third N. He still has two Verseekers. We still have our Shona available and one N in order to prevent the deck out. And guys, if you're sitting through this whole video, you guys are my heroes. But this is actually rather interesting, I would say. Okay, so never mind. Um, his hand is so big right now. Um, I'm just gonna pass here. Okay. Um, we're just gonna cycle. We're gonna use up one more card, but the fact that we can reuse... Um, the Team Rocket's handiwork to potentially give us an edge is really good. Really, really good. There's one puzzle of time. Um, okay, so we're apparently gonna draw past, which I appreciate so that I don't have to cycle through. Um, I also get to keep the rough seas in my hand, which is pretty good. Um, Which is pretty good. Yeah, the team ro like we're gonna need a couple of hits for the team rocket's handiwork to to work well for us. At least one. And I think with the Shona and the N and if we get back a verse seeker off of the puzzle of time, that should maybe give us a win. And he's gonna have to use the N first. He's gonna have to use the end first. So maybe I should play the rough seas just in case I draw terribly bad off of the end to four, the eventual end to four. Um, my opponent hasn't shown any stadiums so far. He actually hasn't shown any stadium so far. And wow, he's gonna go on the offensive. He's actually going to go on the offensive, which I do not mind actually. I generally do not mind. Um, it's gonna make the game go a little bit longer, that's for sure. Um, him using up resources with his ability, I also do not mind at all. Um, I will happily trade here. And let's just... I mean, I could Lysander as well, if I'm in any sort of threat from his abilities. I could do that. And, I mean, if worse comes to worse, I just max potion. Yeah, he gives up on that, which I am very happy to see here. So, let's just wait for the two puzzle of time. The puzzle of time, I'm gonna have to use that Team Rocket's handiwork, or rather get back the Team Rocket's handiwork and the Versus Seeker. That's what I need to get back. Come on. Okay, so I just pass now. Draw a pass, draw a pass. And now we have a solid minute and 30 seconds almost um, ahead of our opponent. <laughs> a 40 minute game so far. 40 minute game. Wow, he decides to retreat. Oh gosh, Ion Pool. Wow, that is something I did not consider. That is definitely something I did not consider. Wow. Well, that's very annoying, I would say. That is very, very annoying. But, I mean, I could force the fisherman, the, ugh, that's so bad. <laughs> that rim raid is so bad for us. Okay, let's give him, I guess, a false sense of security. We still have rough seas. Um, two, I believe. No, just one rough seas. Okay, so he does decide to retreat, promotes the Granger Ranger break. A Verse Seeker into Fisherman would be very annoying. 
And okay, so he's gonna try to target down the whaler. Huh. This kind of complicates things a little bit. That iron thing. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna play the captivating Pokepuff now. Just the one for Oki, though. So one for one. And I'm going to Lysander. I mean, this just means I'm pretty confident, I guess. And I'm gonna retreat into this Waylord. I mean, I'm confident in the fact that I'm not gonna completely whiff on a four tails um, double team's rocket handiwork or something weird like that. Wow, he even runs floatstone. <laughs> he even runs the floatstone. He even runs the floatstone. There's a seeker for a fisherman. Ugh, that's annoying. That's one less fisherman for. Yeah. <sighs> The Remorade's probably going to be my opponent's win condition. It's generally going to be my opponent's win condition, I believe. I actually think that's going to be my opponent's win condition. Wow. Because he has energy. We know he has energy. Ugh. Okay. When he has two cards left, I might have to risk. Maybe that's the only way I'm going to win here. Um, I'd rather wait one more turn. 140 damage doesn't KO me, so I'm gonna pass. Okay, I need to hold on four more turns. So that one heads means I win, potentially. I mean, he must see the puzzle of time, but also the four verse seeker. So I wonder what he's wondering. <laughs> and I'm okay baiting him into using up energy. Okay, he targets the benched Waylord. And he's gonna damage the active. So I'll be forced to play the max potion and the rough seas. He went for a trainer's mail. Which I'm really surprised. Um, probably to see what he has left in his deck. Not entirely sure. Um, okay. Okay, okay. I don't want to give up prize cards here. I can't. I'm relying a hundred, a hundred percent on. Um, on the puzzle of time situation here i'm a hundred percent relying on that to win i need three more turns though i might not have three more turns okay but he attaches to the active that's good that means rough sea stays that means rough seas stays in play which I am very happy to see, and more giant water shurikens is really good, also. Um, yeah, that Remoraid attack is really annoying. Really, really annoying. And the fact that I don't have the puzzle of time yet is also really annoying. But two more turns, guys. We need two more turns so that we can potentially beat our opponent. Um, Okay, so he's gonna discard the stadium. That's one more turn though. Is he going to use an ability though? Is he going to use an ability? Okay, oops. No, he doesn't. So he removes the stadium, that's fine. And I immediately top deck the puzzle of time. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna remove the splash. Maybe should have used the enhanced hammer, but that's okay. And I just pass here, and now uh, one more turn. One more turn, and we should average one heads off of two flips. We flipped two tails a turn earlier. If my opponent doesn't play the end next turn, 
We might be good here. Might. Very big might. Very big might. Okay. So he attaches. Is he going to retreat? Yes. Okay. So he should only have one energy left. One verse seeker left too. Or maybe well, maybe two energy, yeah. Looks like he has two energy still. No, he just used the ability. Okay. So if I had a DCE, but it's priced, if I had the DCE, I would actually use the Michino. But I might have to give up. Yep. Well, no. I'm gonna play Trainer's Mail. If I find a max potion, which I do, I'm gonna heal off the damage off of Waylord. So, uh, there's the victory, okay. Wow. <laughs> I really wanted to use the Team Rocket's handiwork to deck out my opponent. Um, we had to use our resources really, really smartly, and we had to bait our opponent into thinking he was safe, then he wasn't safe, then he went on the offensive, then we healed, then he used Remoraid. But yeah, um, that was a really interesting game, and I mean, I'm sure I misplayed a bunch of times during that game, but that's Waylord for you. Um, I hope you guys give the deck a try. Um, it's a very budget-friendly deck. It only requires one Shaman, apparently, so that should um, get a lot of people maybe excited if this is actually viable for tournaments, and I guess the Dutch player, or um, the player that got second place rather at the Dutch Open definitely proved it's viable. So that's gonna be it for me guys. Thank you so so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys on Wednesday where I will now know for sure how I did at Athens. I hope I don't run into any whaler honestly and that will be all for me. Thank you guys so much and bye bye.